Okay, in number 45, the directions ask us to find the average. Actually, they worded that in kind of a funny way right here. It says calculate the average over the given interval. Usually they would include the word value. This is an average value problem, guys. And we learned this formula at the very end of our notes in 6.2. So the average value formula is 1 over b minus a times the definite integral from a to b of whatever function it is that we're taking the average value of. Now, just to refresh your memory, what you're finding right here, guys, is the area underneath the curve. B minus A gives you the width uh, of that interval right there. So you're really taking area divided by width, and that gets you the average height of your function. So we've been given a function, and we've been given an interval, and that's all we need. 1 over B minus A, our B value is 3, and then minus our A value of negative 1 means that's actually a 3 plus 1. We multiply that by a definite integral now from negative 1 to 3 of this function, which is 2x cubed minus 6x squared taken with respect to x. I would have no problem at all if you guys just wanted to go straight to your calculators here and type that in. That would be perfectly fine. I'm going to have some fun with this one. 1 fourth times. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, that is going to become an x to the fourth. The 2 divided by 4 is going to make a 1 half out in front of that. And then minus, this will be an x cubed now. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And all of that is going to go from negative 1 to 3. So let's see where that gets us. 1 fourth times. And here we go. Parentheses are your friends here, guys. Let's use them. 3 to the fourth is 81. Half of that is going to be 81 over 2. And then minus 3 cubed is 27 times 2 is going to be 54. Notice I'm not worried yet about making that 54 have a 2 on the bottom. You might see why in a second. Minus now let's put in that negative 1 right there. Negative 1 to the 4th is 1 times 1 half is 1 half. And then minus, okay, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Times negative 2, this is actually going to be a plus 2 right there. And that's where things sit right now. And what I was hoping would happen happened. I don't know if you guys saw it right here, the fractions aren't going to be bad at all. This is one fourth times. All right, guys, I'm kind of mentally distributing this minus sign right here. But right here, I have 81 over 2 minus 1 over 2. That's going to get me an 80 over 2, which is just 40. Not that hard at all. And then we've got a minus 54 and a minus 2. So that'll be a minus 56 there. Okay. So this is 1 fourth times a negative 16 right there. That works out nicely. And we end up with a negative 4 here for the average value of that function on this region. So let me cheat and look at the solutions manual here real quick on problem number 45. And yeah, negative 4 was their answer. The fact that this average value is negative tells you that the majority of this region needs to fall below the x-axis in order for its average value to actually be negative. Okay, so that's how we would handle number 45. On an average value function, you're really just kind of following this formula. And again here, guys, I should probably say this over and over again. If this were a test question, what I would need to see is some type of setup of the equation. You don't really need to write out that uh, generic formula of it, but I would need to see something like this. But since you're going to be allowed to use your calculators, then you could go directly to the answer here and skip all of this fun work right there. As long as you show me what integral it is that you typed in and you write out the final answer, you guys will get full credit on a question like that. However, it is possible that maybe on the AP test, they might ask you to do an average value on a non-calculator question, in which case you're going to need to know how to do it manually as we go through there. Okay, that's number 45.